Hey guys, Fat Heisenberg here, and today I'm going to be talking about the supposed Battlefield 5 leaks um, that have been surfacing on Reddit and that lately. And the retailer that supposedly published a bit of a spoiler, um, well, suggested spoiler, on their website by advertising the game with some uh, symphony, synthesis of what the game's going to be about and it reckons it's about a small time a uh, small town guy who's going to help the US army try and fight and take back his homeland basically to me it sounds bullshit um i mean first things first please no world war 1 we we don't want world war 1 um world war 1 would be a terrible setting for an action based shooter and I know there will be people out there who disagree with me but I really I just don't see it I mean the choice of weaponry is not there the choice of vehicles isn't there the choice of maps I mean what maps do you put into a World War 1 game do we just have trench warfare do, I mean open fields with landmines and barbed wire I, I don't get it i don't get what the appeal would be so i think we can put to bed the world war one suggestions or rumors um world war two on the other hand would be a better setting um but i'm pretty sure it's going to be modern and i'm going to throw something out there with the next battlefield game that may well i think it would go down well with fans and that is that at the end of bad company 2 the final cutscene it said the russians the russians are invading not here they're coming in from alaska now think about that for a moment what are the odds what are the possibilities of bad company 3 coming out um on one of the supposed leaked documents, it lists maps in the interior of the US. LA, Oregon, Clearwater National Park, and the outskirts of San Francisco. Now, I'm no history expert, and I don't claim to be, but I'm pretty certain that there were never any invasions during World War II, especially none that got as deep into the United States as LA or Oregon. Um, which kind of suggests that the next game is going to be based on uh, an invasion and that kind of leans back towards what was said at the end of Bad Company 2 which was the US was now being invaded by Russia now going back to it I'm pretty sure this is all BS I don't believe these leaked documents and there are several reasons why. One of the reasons and the most glaring reason is the reimaged maps section which is a favourite of Battlefield games. They do like to bring back previously popular maps and revamp them. Uh, Gulf of Omar, Operation Metro, um, oh, what's the island one called? Wake Island it got there in the end they do like to do that but this document says reimaged in frostbite 3 these maps are already in frostbite 3 the maps that they're suggesting which are operation locker goldman railway uh zavod and off the top of my head i can't remember what the the other map is the question is would zavod get the nod over Paracel Storm, the map that I'm playing on now on Battlefield 4. Uh, without a question, Goldmund and Operation Locker are fantastic game uh, maps, and I'm pretty sure that those maps would be re-imaged if they were to be. But I'm not so sure about Zavod. Anyway, going back into another reason I think that it could be Bad Company 3, um the other leaked maps 
suggest Ukraine and Russia. Um, as well as making the final stand on US soil, it seems to be that it's going to be Crimea and Russia that we're fighting. With the hint as well that it's going to continue the conflict, the fantasy conflict of China and Russia versus the US. Um, these do sound like excellent locations. Um, I don't think there have been any uh, genuine set maps uh, based in sort of Kiev or the Ukraine. Um, and it would be exciting. It would open up a new dynamic as well with the possibility of the snowy maps or, or densely populated uh, towns sort of the favela uh, type maps from Modern Warfare 2 Call of Duty back then was good I'm sorry guys it wasn't my favourite but I did enjoy that map and the running street to street rooftop to rooftop it was good it, it was a new dynamic um, I think we can all agree that the the World War One setting would suck, and I um, I think the majority of level-headed people are in agreement that that part of the leak is fake. Uh, if it's if it was any of the leak is true, I can't see any viable. Um, how do I put this? I can't see any value in making a World War Two game. If you want to do it. Stick a DLC in there, it's sort of like Bad Company Two did with the Vietnam DLC. I mean that that was brilliant. It brought new money into the game. It brought new players into the game, and they didn't need to to uh, try and sell the game on its own. I mean, yes, they, it was a paid DLC, but the Vietnam War it's a sketchy subject at best. Um, there's not many games and game makers have dared to touch it. But what they did, what DICE did, was it was adequate. It was everything that needed to be done. It threw in a few maps, some new guns, some new weapons, and it brought a little bit of the authenticity as well. Um, that's a possible uh, alternative to a full World War One based game. So I feel, in short, anything that can come out of these leaked documents with even a hint of truth, I think leans towards bad company. I think what needs to be done going forwards as well, not only for Battlefield games, but for most online games in general, we need an incentive to actually stay out of chat parties with our friends and go into the in-game chat and talk to people and work together and squad up and I mean I can understand in this video I'm not doing that but again when I'm recording I tend not to do it I think if the new game is to come out this year it needs to do the following things it needs to be new and exciting in the same way that Battlefield 3 was when it first came out. Uh, it needs to step away from what Hardline was. Um, not that Hardline's an appalling game. It's a decent game. But it's it's not Battlefield. And it's kind of like if FIFA all of a sudden started to make their football games exactly like Pro Evo. Fans would find it difficult to accept that. Um going forward I think it's better for Battlefield to stick to being Battlefield and not try and emulate Call of Duty and I think COD needs to do the same back to the final thoughts on these Battlefield 5 documents that have been uh, popping up all over the place the documents themselves I really believe are a very clever fake I do think there's going to be a Battlefield game this year um, I think there's a gap in the market for a Battlefield game at the moment because DICE need to try and take advantage of the fact that so many Call of Duty fans are falling out of love with the game. Um, and I don't think DICE will ever follow in the same vein of going, oh, hey, let's bring in boost jumping or wall running or teleporting or any of that stuff. 
I think they will try and stick to the fundamentals of, you know, you're a soldier. If you want to parachute out of a plane, do it. But you're not going to be able to run up a wall doing backflips and dual wielding laser miniguns because that's not what Battlefield should be. Um, I think they need to try and take advantage of that and couple it with stuff that needs to be done for the good of gaming. Uh, an improved reward system even for actually being in the chat with your clan mates. Uh, sort of like Rainbow Six Siege has a boost. If one person in your group's got a boost, your entire team gets a boost. Not as much, but some. And if they could bring it in so as everybody in the squad had got their mic on, they earn extra squad XP. You know, you could put it on a small multiplier. Uh, you know, a 0.5 per person. So if everybody in their, your squad is on your mic, you're getting a uh, 2.5% boost to all XP. It's not huge, but it's an incentive. And some people, especially the people who are grinding to the higher levels, would stay in the squad uh, chat to gain the extra XP. And as well as that, you earn so much extra XP when you're in a squad and you're playing properly and listening to your clan mates. It's unreal. Um, other things that I feel need to be done with Battlefield is improved party system. Uh, getting into a party and getting into a squad and going into a game needs to be easier. It shouldn't be a case as it has been in the previous years of, uh, of more recent years where you have to go in a game and then your friend has to join your game and then you've got to try and switch to the same team as each other and then you've got to dick about and get in the same squad. It can be a ball eight. You can lose half of a match doing that. So that's something that definitely needs to be improved as well. I fully expect to see a Battlefield game potentially October, November time, but they may push it and do what they did with Hardline where they bought it out randomly in the middle of March. I know that it was delayed, but I feel it wasn't an actual delay to do with the gameplay or gameplay issues. I feel it was a tactical delay, and I think they'll go down the same route with Battlefield this year. Because if they let Call of Duty bring their game out and fail first, then... Every, all of those Call of Duty fans that are going to be sick of Ghosts 2 are going to jump and try Battlefield. Uh, and that would be best tactically from that point of view for DICE. Anyway, guys, I really enjoyed bringing you my thoughts today. Any of you have got any additional comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. And feel free to leave me your thoughts going forward of what you would like to see in a new Battlefield game. Anyway guys, thanks for listening. I've been Fat Heisenberg and I will catch you next time.